Good morning, everyone. It's an absolutely beautiful day emotionally for me. <laughs> Physically, it's cold here. Oh my gosh, it's like toucan mitt weather. I should have gotten my mitts out. I so badly wanted to sit outside here and record this video for you guys because it's just so beautiful and the birds are chirping, but June is just cold and drippy so far and it looks like that's what it's going to be for most of June. So I will just have to get dressed. No wandering around in my bathing suit today, that's for sure. So, um... Well, the cards I pulled for um, us today are giveaway ceremony. It's number 43 and skunk medicine, which is number seven. I've actually haven't, these are new cards to me. So new teachings for me as well. So giveaway is about release. It's about letting go. And I find it interesting. Oh, I'm getting like goosebumps. I'm finding interesting that I pulled this card today for the collective because for me personally, uh, my community is having uh, like one of these uh, community-wide grass sale days. And it's like a fun day and uh, you could rent a table at the hall and sell your stuff. And I had wanted to do that. I just wasn't able to get myself motivated and ready. I wasn't able to figure out how to deal with being inside under fluorescent lights and around people all day long. So I said, thanks, but I won't be able to. But I still got ready for it. And suddenly last night, it was like, well, maybe, maybe somehow I'll be able to give away stuff today. So I'm just going to go through my boxes with wild abandon and my pendulum <laughs> and, and like see what is ready to be let go of. And I got a lot of stuff. I got a truck full. Uh, some of the stuff is just going straight off to the garbage. I have been hauling around crafting stuff that isn't, uh, isn't, I'm not going to give that away. That'll just go to the garbage. And it feels so good with like each item that I put into the giveaway box. It's like, oh man, this is so amazing. I feel so much lighter. I feel so much more ready to let things come into my life. I feel so much more ready to move to my home. <laughs> And what I had wanted to do, I just wanted to set up a table and just say, for me to you, freely take, like I'm just freely giving, right? I don't want to charge. I don't want to sell it. I just want to give it away. So the teaching for the giveaway ceremony is called the potlatch ceremony. And it's when the clans came together and they just freely gave and they received so like they gave to whoever was in need and the people who needed they just freely received and then in the years coming when the people who had received were able to give they gave away more than they had received and it's like oh my goodness that is so so beautiful so beautiful and then guess what? The government decided to kibosh that because, you know, you can't have people just giving and receiving. You can't have poor people, you know, <laughs> whatever. It's just so out to lunch, but that's okay. So when you want to, this whole ceremony was giving without strings attached. There's just no strings attached. And our giving in Western society here in North America has become so perverted and so convoluted. And it's like, if I give you something, then I expect to get something in return. I'm not going to give you something if I know that you're a cheapskate and aren't going to give me a really good gift when my birthday comes around. No, it has nothing to do with that. Like, I want to give you something because I love you and I value you. And the thing that I'm giving you has value and meaning to me and I'm freely giving it to you, and I don't expect anything in return. 
every single thing has a role. Okay. Every single thing has a role in creation. So like every single one of my possessions is sacred. And I've been slowly over the years that has already come into my, my consciousness. Everything is sacred. Everything has a place. Everything has a use. So if it's just sitting in a box, if it's collecting dust on our shelves, uh, if it's something that's just sitting on the counter but we don't use it, we're not honoring that possession as being sacred. So then it's better to give it away to someone who will put it to use, who will honor it. And isn't that a, a hard-hitting teaching for our culture today, this throwaway culture where we don't honor our possessions, we don't treat them as sacred. It just has, has me thinking, it has me just pondering all sorts of things and just, I want to treat my possessions as sacred and I don't, you know, I'm working at it, but I don't. We all have far too much stuff. It's impossible to treat things as sacred when we have so many things, you know. And like I was saying before, there is so much relief through release. Like there's so much relief I'm finding in the letting go. I have been in the letting go process of my possessions for the past six years. I started, well, I started more than six years ago. But six years ago is when I moved from the home where I had lived in for 15 so years to a community an hour away and I went through a significant letting go and I've been bouncing around like crazy for the past five years and I've just let go of so many of my physical possessions and every time I do it it feels amazing I just love the feeling generosity is a talent and a virtue that comes from dropping the fear of scarcity and from trusting great mystery there, I have definitely found in my process of letting go that there is faith and trust required. Because if I come from it just from myself, like if I look at something and say, is this something I want to keep or is this something I want to let go of? I'm always going to want to keep it because I haven't yet, because there's, I have a connection to this. I have an emotional attachment to it. And I, I'm getting better at that as well. I can now pick up things and it's like, oh, I don't want that. So that just immediately goes like, I, why am I keeping this? Okay, then I'm just going to let it go. When I use the pendulum and I like ask my higher self, I ask spirit, is it in my best and highest interest to keep this? And it's no, then I trust that it is an absolute no. And then I had a pen yesterday. I was holding something and the answer was, no, this is not in your best and highest interest. I'm like, but I want to keep this. And then I stopped and I thought about it. And it's like, well, yeah, the human Molly wants to keep it. I have, I, I recognize that I have, it wasn't even an emotional attachment to it. It was, uh, it was like a picture. Well, I guess it was an emotional attachment to it. It's hard to describe. It was something, the picture had uh, significance to me. And I thought, stopped and thought about it. And it's like, why would I go against what great spirit is telling me? You know, like, he knows what's coming. I don't need this in my life. I will, will be happy to let it go and bless someone else with it. So that's... Yeah, feels nice. Then there's the letting go of attitudes, thoughts, behaviors, actions that don't, that aren't serving us anymore. This isn't just about, well, I, I'm taking it in a different direction. This, like, who do you want to be? 
Have you ever sat down and written down a list of who do you want to be? Who do you want to become? What characteristics are really important to you? What would you like to nurture yourself into becoming? What would that look like? Who would you like to walk down the street and, or what would you like to feel like? You know, that's another thing. What would you like to feel like walking down the street? I know. I've been working on it for a while. I know what I want to be. I know what I want to feel like. And that has meant letting go of attitudes, thoughts, behaviors that won't get me there. Like, so you need to go. And no, it's not just uh, as easy as saying, okay, you need to go. But it's a first step, I think, in, to write it down, to really be, to really get solid in knowing what you would like to be like, what you would like to feel like, and then get that flowing through your consciousness and start putting that out there. And then every, every morning, I did this a while every morning, it's like, what do I want to feel like today? And I'd write it down, today, I want to feel gracious. I want to feel like I'm flowing through life with ease. Today, I want to feel generous. Today, I want to feel like I'm living in abundance and I'm happy and content. Today, I want to feel like I'm absolutely in love with life. You know, you get the picture. It starts to get, you know, your juices flowing and, and you need to be thinking about these things to get them into your, into your consciousness. So the animal that uh, wants to give its medicine to us today is skunk. This is my first uh, learning about skunk medicine, and it's about reputation and respect. Both, well, first you have self-respect, and then you will gain the respect of others. So skunk, tell me a story so I will know it well of how to attract and how to repel. So by walking your talk and by respecting yourself, you will create a position of strength and honored reputation. Self when you have self-esteem, when you're solid in yourself, when you know who you are, you know what you believe for, you know what you stand for, the need to bully, the need to aggravate, the need to be passive aggressive or all that sort of stuff just falls away because it's no longer important. I know what I believe. I know what I stand for. I know what my purpose here is on earth. I am with greater ease and, um, oh, what's the word? Oh, I'm having a total brain fart. I'm able to let go of other people attacking me with greater ease. It's, I can let things flow off my back. I'm not hanging on to them anymore because I have self-esteem, I have self-respect, I have self-love, and therefore I no longer feel the need to get back at them. I've never been someone who has gone back at people with my actions very few times, but or with, even with my verbal words. But in my thoughts, I'd send them poisonous thoughts, poisonous darts with my thoughts. I'd like attack them. And I, I no longer need to do that because I love myself and I love these people. I recognize that the people who hurt me are hurting very badly themselves, so I can just let it go. My, self, uh, my sense of self is intact. So when I was more in the phase, in the stage of feeling like I wanted to be vengeful <laughs> and uh, she wants to play uh, vengeful and wanting revenge. <laughs> and I recognize that, you know, I believe that karma is a bitch and that 
I don't need to have re I don't need to have revenge on anyone like the universe will take care of it you know and that gave me great comfort for, <laughs> for a while I don't need to lift a finger you know but even now I've let go I've let go of that thought I've just completely let go of the re revenge thing and like wanting wanting the universe to pay people back for the shit that they've done or that they do to me it's like I want everyone to be built up I want everyone to experience love happiness, wholeness, contentment. So when you have self-esteem, self-esteem, self-respect, you will naturally start to repel those who are not of like mind. You will start to attract people who are like-minded. Uh, I'm still... I'm not sure how I feel about this in my own life. I mean, I'm, it just seems like uh, the people who are not sort of on the same wavelength as me have just dropped away. They're just dropping away and I've just let them go. There's no, I'm not trying to hang on to people anymore who, you know, we used to be friends and, and like, yeah, I'm just letting it go. So then this speaks of like, what is your personal medicine? What? How do others know you? What kinds of people are attracted to you? That'll tell you a lot about what your personal medicine is. You know, what kind of people do you hang out with? It's important to, to be aware of this sort of stuff. To not just blithely going through life with your blinders on. Because that's not the road to happiness or to contentment or to living a life of any sort of fulfillment. What kind of reputation do you have? So it also, this also, like skunk also speaks to learning energy flow. How is your energy flowing? What sort of energy are you putting out there? Um, reading body language, you know, what body language are you putting out there? And I, th I think that this also speaks to emotion regulation. You know, if you want to gain, if you want to have self-respect and self-esteem so that others will respect you and you'll sort of repel what you don't want in your life, Emotion regulation is really important, and it's it's uh, so easy to just go off the handle, whether just in your mind or like sort of physically to the people around you. So that's the medicine of skunk. I was thinking about how does skunk relate to the giveaway ceremony to letting go. Because like skunk is here, this this was the teaching for today. I sort of pulled this card, skunk for skunk to walk alongside us and help us with the teaching. I, I know it's there, it's like it's skirting around the edges of my mind, but I'm not able to completely put words to it now. I don't think I read you the poem for giveaway before, and it's beautiful, so I will read that. Aho, child of earth, do you know the secret of the giveaway? The more you release, the more you receive, for that is nature's way. Aho, child of earth, do you believe in reaping what you sow? A drop of wisdom will bring you truth, and you will truly know. You know, reaping what you sow, that's that's part of skunk medicine, definitely. All right, so that's our, our strength, our medicine, our teaching for today. That'll go with us through the day. You can call on skunk whenever you, whenever you feel like you need some help in uh, 
self-respect, and when it comes to all things with your reputation. Skunk is a small but powerful, mighty animal. You know, he doesn't need to be vicious. He just needs to, you know, lift his tail and give a little spritz. <laughs> so I was so, so touched by some of your comments. I turned on my phone this morning and there was like, oh, just, they just hit me. And I was, I wanted to read some of them. Some of them were a little older, but there are other people who watch on the channel here who are holding space for the collective and i wanted to read these comments so that because not you know i don't know who reads comments the comments but um i thought that these comments were really important and thank you for being vulnerable and open and sharing some of these little snippets into your life it helps me hold space for you in a more specific way. It helps me sort of know where some of you are at. Some of you I talk, have talked to personally, some of you, I, some, some of you are new. Um, I'm so honored, so, so honored. So see you on the fly. This was on, in response to the talking stick uh, teaching that I did yesterday or the wisdom that I did yesterday. See you on the fly said, I teach middle school and students do not know how to stop talking, looking at themselves on the computer cameras or listening to others. Too much talking about TikTok and toxic bantering. And I immediately, my first reaction was, oh my gosh, I just want to hold space for these children. <laughs> I want to hold space for the youth who are just <laughs> so broken, who are not being taught anything functional healthy or useful at home and the whole culture is just toxic and then i thought no no i gotta let that go you know i had I just i pulled the card about the giveaway ceremony it's like no that's not what i'm here for i'm here to hold space for you uh see you on the fly i'm here to hold space for you who are working with the youth of today you know, I, I see you, I feel you, I hold you in my heart, I send you my love and my light. I have a great, I love the youth, I have been a youth leader. I have great connection to youth and to children, kind of have a great connection to everyone, but um, I would prefer, if I had a choice, if, if I was gonna go out into humanity and work with people, I would love to work with, with youth. Don't know where I was going with this. <laughs> okay, I don't know, it just poofed. Um, at Pagan Dreamer, uh, she replied to see you on the fly's comment and said, toxic bantering is a good description, like passive aggress aggression and mocking. Okay, sorry, let me start this again. Toxic bantering is a good description, like passive aggression and mocking seems normal fun here in the UK with no self-awareness or clue how it can affect others. And I totally agree with that. Toxic bantering, you know, it's just absolutely sickening to hear kids put each other down or even the way some adults are talking to each other these days. It's just the poison, the poison that is being put out into the universe is just absolutely staggering. And I just, I want you guys to know that there are many people, there are monks, there are nuns, there are others sitting and holding space for us and that is all they do all day long like they've done this for for years or maybe their entire li lives i don't know there are people sitting right now holding space for us trying to prevent the tear from getting bigger 
trying to correct our course. I'm not exactly sure what their intent would be, but we are being held in the warm embrace of many. So thank you for that. Uh, nice to meet you, said. My phone is being shut off tomorrow. Maybe it's a sign to put it away and stop searching for answers outside of myself. I am sending you so much love. When I first heard th uh, the phrase, we hold all the answers inside of ourselves, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Whatever, man. I had no concept of what that meant. It made literally no sense to me. I'm like, I'm not wise. How the heck do I have all the answers inside of myself? You know, like, you have to, I'd, I'd have to go to school for a million years. I, that's, <laughs> I was so messed up. That's sort of how I felt, right? And now I'm learning more and more about the collective consciousness and and how... We can get ourselves to the point of accessing the collective consciousness. And I'm working at accessing the conscious, the collective consciousness of the ancestors. So, you know, if I'm out in the forest and I'm, and I'm using my chainsaw, and I know a little bit about the chainsaw, you know, but it's, it's dangerous. It's a very dangerous thing uh, for a person to go off into the forest by themselves and do and like not tell anyone, whatever. So I ask the ancestors, okay, you know, I know, I know a little bit, but I want you to be with you, to be with me. I want you to teach me. So if I like, if I'm figuring out how to cut something and I, I don't have the wisdom, like, can you teach me how to cut this? And that sort of thing. So we do hold all the answers inside of ourselves. We just need to figure out how to access it. And one of the things that we need to do to access it is to get silent and to just be. To stop the running around, to stop the distractions, to stop the numbing and just be. We got to start facing our shadows. And I know that you're in this process. Nice to meet you. I know you are. So I'm sending you so much love. So, so much love. Um, Adam David said, I need a talking stick to offer others as it bugs me when I realize I'm interrupting them during a long form conversation. Hey, good on you, man, to be self-aware like that. So figure out a way that you can uh, remind yourself when you're having a conversation to just listen, like write it down on a piece of paper and like have it on your phone or like have it somewhere in your eyesight or something. You know, now that it's in your consciousness, keep working at it. Make it an intention of yours. Like if that's how you want to be, if that's, if that's something that is important to you, then put it out there and start working on it. You know, figure out, figure out little ways to start working on it. And Gigi, ooh, Gigi, I'm so excited for you, T, for you too. Uh, she says, life is so amazing right now. I gave my resignation today after 18 years. So excited. Gigi, you are amazing, girl. I'm excited for you too to see where this will all take you. Thanks for sharing with us. Okay, I have rambled on. Everything's getting wet here because it's starting to rain again. So I just want to remind you that I am holding space for you. And that you have an ancestor, a grandmother specifically, sitting beside each and every one of you. who is there to support you, to hold you, to celebrate with you, to dance with you, to cry with you, to mourn with you, to help you navigate the challenges we face.
I am constantly sending out my love and my strength out through the network. All you have to do is reach out to receive. Tap into it. You know, this power is vast. It's profound, it's intense, it's in deep, it's deep, it goes deep. <laughs> I mean, it goes to the deepest depths of Mother Earth. It goes like into the, the farthest away star nation. As I work on it and learn how to access more and more of this power, more and more will flow through me and more and more will be accessible to anyone who is ready, willing, and able to receive it. I love you. I am here for you. I see you. I love hearing from you. Okay. Here's some love. So from Sam and I, and I don't think anyone else is around here right now. Oh yeah, Foxy's there. I don't know if you can see her. Hep will be under the covers somewhere, and Floofsters. He hasn't been venturing here when I've been when I've come and sat here, but you know, give him a a few more weeks, maybe or not even weeks. He'll start coming further and further off the beaten path. He'll become more comfortable with the property and the yard. So we all send you our love, all the ancestors and the magical forest beings and the, the two-leggeds, the four-leggeds, the fin, the furred, the feathered, and the creepy crawlers. So, so, so much love. All right, I could probably go on for a long time with all the love that everyone has for you, but, you know, know that you are loved. Until next time.